गुड मॉर्निंग वन एंड ऑल इन पास क्लासेस वी हैव कंप्लीटेड यूनिट वन एंड टू इन बायोलॉजी ऑफ नॉन कॉर्डेट्स नाउ लेट अस डिस्कस अबाउट यूनिट थ्री व्हिच इंक्लूड्स फाइलम प्लाटी हेलमेंटिस एंड फाइलम न्यूमैटी हेलमेंटिस फर्स्ट लेट अस नो अबाउट द जनरल कैरेक्टर्स ऑफ प्लाटी हेलमेंटिस फर्स्टली Platy helminthes in the word platy helminthes. Platys means flat, and helminth means means worms, which means these organisms are flat. Uh, their body structure is flat organisms. And next, their habitat are mostly parasitic. Few are free living in sea water or fresh water. Habitat means the place where stay. Ah, uh, mostly parasitic, which feed on other organisms. Uh, and few are free living in sea water which means some live in both sea water or fresh water next their grade of organization is organ system grade of organization their symmetry shows their body shows bilateral symmetry and the body is dorsoventrally flattened the germ layer is triploblastic which means the body of platy helminthes contains three layers ecto Uh, ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm that's why the uh, type of organisms are called as triploblastic animals the ectoderm is very specialized with distinct epidermis in the outer layer of the organism is called as ectoderm and it is specialized with the distinct epidermis which is the outer layer of the organism next coelom coelom is absent that's why these are type of organisms are called as acelomates next digestive system is incomplete or absent excretory system consists of protonephridia with flame cells respiration is by simple diffusion of gases through body surface and these organ this type of organism respire through their body surface next circulatory system is absent next reproduction is done both asexual uh, sexual and asexual by sexual by gametic fusion in hermaphrodite species and by asexual by regeneration and fission next the fertilization is internal fertilization is done internally of a body next life cycle is complex involving one or two host and which this means the life cycles undergoes between one or two goes these types of organism undergoes two types of one or two more, one or more hosts next let us talk about life cycle and pathogenicity of fasciola hepatica in this diagram in this picture picture you can observe the structure of fasciola hepatica the top part is called as the entry is called as head sorry mouth and here the apical notch is called as head here a genital open is present around both we can see this one is called as sucker which helps to holds holds the organism to any particular substratum or any surface it helps next ventral sucker this one is called as ventral sucker ventral sucker this part is called head and the remaining part is called body part and the last one is called as excretory pore this is the structure of fasciola hepatica next fasciola hepatica is also known as common liver fluke or sheep liver fluke the disease caused by the fluke is known as fasciolus definite host or primary host is sheep cattle humans other mammals and intermediate host or secondary host is freshwater snail their morphology looks like a flat leaf like body 20 to 30 mm long and 8 to 15 mm wide in life cycle of mirasi uh, life cycle of fasciola hepatica it undergoes different types of larval stages and firstly let us know about the first larval stage mirasidium larva mirasidium larva is the first larval stage which is free living and penetrates a freshwater or marine snail 
it is minute oval and elongated free swimming stage anteriorly it has it has conical apical papillae and attached it is a glandular sac with an opening with apical gland they are sorry there are two pigmented x shaped eye spots and a nervous system there is a pair of protonephridia each with two flames the midacidium doesn't feed it swims about in water or moist film but it dies in 8 hours unless it can reach a suitable intermediate host in this um, midacidium is the first larval stage and we can observe the main primary character it is a free swimming larva because the body of the pyracidium larva we can observe here the body of miracidium larva is consist of cilia which helps which helps the organisms to free swimming and it is minute oval and elongated the body is elongated in structure in free swimming stage and it doesn't feed but swims in water or any moist film but it dies in 8 hours if not unless it can reach their intermediate host next the sporocyst the sporocyst is an elongated germinal sac about 0.7 mm long and covered with a thin cuticle the glands nerve nerve tissue apical papillae and eye spots of miracidium disappears the hollow interior sporocyst has a pair of protonephridia each with two flames it has germ cells and germ balls the sporocyst moves around in the host tissues and its germ cells develop into a third type of larva called ridia larva a sporocyst forms 5 to 8 ridia the ridia larva passes over the sporocyst and sporocyst by rupture of its body wall into the snail tissues with the aid of muscular collar and ventral process which means after midacidium larva it undergoes into sporocyst larval stage the sporocyst larval stage is a elongated germinal sac it uh, looks like a bag like structure with a measurement of 0.7 mm long and covered with a thin cuticle and the abdominal layer will be thin thin cuticle after this uh, in this sporocyst we can observe these germ cells these are the germ cells these are the germ cells these germ cells next uh, up uh, are these germ cells are present inside the sporocyst and next each sporocyst contain 5 to 8 ridia ridia larva is the next stage of the sporocyst larva and we can observe in the sporocyst larval stage we can observe the this ridia larva next stage of the fasciola hepatica life cycle larva this ridia larva each sporocyst consists of a 5 to 8 ridia larva this ridia larva ruptures the body wall of the snail tissue and aids with the muscular collar and ventral processes next the ridia larva the ridia is elongated about 1.3 mm to 1.6 mm in length with the two ventral process called lappets or procrucula near the posterior end and birth pore near the anterior end body wall has cuticle mesenchyme and muscles ridia has an anterior mouth pharynx in which numerous pharyngeal glands open sac like intestine and there is a pair of protonephridia with two pairs of flame cells each ridia forms about 14 to 20 cercaria larva here we can observe in this ridia larval stage in its body we can observe the cercaria larva these are the next stage of the life cycle cercaria larva each ridia forms about 14 to 20 cercaria larva next this is the cercaria larva in which we observe, we have observed in 
radia larva this is the cercaria larva has an oval body about 0.25 sorry 0.25 mm to 0.35 mm long and a simple tail the cercaria escape from the birth pore of the radia then migrate into the digestive gland of snail into the pulmonary sac from where they pass out into the surrounding water the time taken in snail from the entry of miracidia to the exit of cercaria is 5 to 6 weeks so this is the cercaria larva in this we can observe that this one is the body part and this one is the tail part tail parts helpful for the locomotion of the organism the cercaria larva has an oval body with the measurement the with the body measurements of 0.25 mm and 0.35 mm long and with a simple tail next the cercaria larva escape from the birth for of the radia and then migrate into the snail's digestive gland and then reach pulmonary sac and then pass out to uh, into the surrounding water uh, for this the the time taken in snail for the entry of miracidia and exit of cercaria larva is 5 to 6 weeks next metacercaria larva this is the last stage uh, metacercaria larva swims about uh, the cercaria larva swim about in water 2 to 3 days then they lose their tails and get enclosed in a cyst secreted by cytogenous glands the ancestor cercaria is called metacercaria which is about 0.2 mm in diameter it is in fact a juvenile fluke if the metacercaria are formed in water they can live for a year but if they are formed on grass or vegetation then they survive only for a few weeks in the past slide we can observe that the cercaria larva has tails later on it loses its tail and it builds it enclose enclosed in a cyst like they by the secreted by the cytogenous glands it uh, first the cercaria swims for the 2 to 3 days in water later it loses the tail and enclo get enclosed in a cyst secreted by cytogenous glands this encysted cercaria is called as metacercaria and uh, its measurement is 0.2 mm in diameter and it is in fact a juvenile fluke and if these metacercaria larva cannot uh, uh, in if uh, these metacercaria larva uh, are formed in water they can live for one year but if they formed on grass or vegetation they can survive for only for few weeks only in water they can live for year in grass or vegetation they can live for few weeks finally this is the life cycle complete life cycle diagrammatic representation of life cycle of fasciola hepatica in left side we can observe the developmental stages for at first they cop, uh, they get copulated in the host organism and next uh, the eggs are released later the development of zygote development of zygote is uh, can be seen and later the first larval stage the formation of miracidium larva takes place and next infection of secondary host uh, will takes place later on the miracidium larva undergoes uh, undergoes into sporocyst larva and next this sporocyst larva undergoes into radia larva radia larva undergoes into cercaria larva cercaria larva undergoes into metacercaria larva this completely leads to the infection of primary host and this is the life cycle here we can observe the embryonated eggs through sheep feces or human feces through feces the eggs the liver flukes adult liver flukes copulate in this intestine area and later the eggs are excreted outside through the feces of both uh, if uh, sheep or human these embryonated are passes into the 
passed out in the feces and next the eggs become embryonated in water next miracidial miracidial larva hatch from eggs seek out snail for intermediate host as a intermediate host next fourth stage miracidia penetrate into snail intermediate host the miracidial larva penetrate into the snail next in the snail uh, we can observe these miracidium next undergo in the snail miracidium undergoes different larval development that is porocyst next ridia and it undergoes cercaria after cercaria through the with the help of tail it uh, comes out of the body of the snail with the uh, tail after few weeks it loses its tail and uh, become encysted into the free swimming uh, cercaria encyst on the aquatic vegetation this aquatic vegetation is ingested by the definite host which means the cattle or sheep these uh, vegetation will be eaten by sheep later on this life cycle will continue and this is the brief uh, brief session of life cycle of fasciola hepatica next these are the parasitic adaptations in helminthes adaptation is the fitness of an organism to its environment it is the characteristic which results in suitable and appropriate morphological and functional correlation between an organism and its environment the parasitic flatworms flatworms have undergone tremendous amount of modification to adapt to their parasitic mode of life these adaptations are known as the parasitic adaptations parasitic adaptations can be two types namely morphological and physiological the adaptation means uh, we can fit uh, it is uh, it is the fitness of an organism to its environment and next uh, here we can uh, these adaptations by the parasites is called the parasitic adaptations the parasitic adaptations is of two types both morphological and physiological in morphological adaptations we can observe three types loss of organisms in uh, some of the organisms they lost their organs in their development next formation of new organs in their development they form new organs for their development next modification modification of existing organs next uh, next one physiological adaptations uh, an anaerobic respiration two anti enzymes and three excessive reproductive potential this is parasitic adaptations in helminthes let us know about general characters of nematia helminthes uh, this is these are mostly parasitic few of them are free living these they are cylindrical elongated slender worm like and tapers at both end triploblastic bilaterally symmetrical they show organ system level of organization the body is unsegmented mouth is present in anterior region body is covered with tough and resistant cuticle digestive system is complete and straight with both mouth and anus respiratory and circulatory organs are absent excretory system consists of intracellular canal or lateral excretory duct and also protonephridia having rennet cells nervous system is simple with nerve ring and longitudinal nerve cords sense organs are poorly developed in the form of papillae which are well defined as amphids in mouth and phasmid in anus these are unisexual that is sexes are separate with sexual dimorphism fertilization is internal may be cross or self development may be direct or indirect larval forms are rhabditiform phylariform and microphylaria next let us uh, discuss about life cycle and pathogenicity of ascaris lumbricoides ascaris lumbricoides is an intestinal round worm it is the large intestinal nematode to infect human 
The adult worm lives in small intestine and grow to a length of more than 30 cm. Human is only the natural host and reservoir of infection. In this point, uh, we are getting to know it is the Oscaris lumbricoid structure. It is present mainly in the intestine, human intestine. It affects only in the intestine of human. It lives in the small intestine and uh, it grows to a length of more than 30 centimeters. And morphology. The worm is sexually dimorphic. Adult male measures about 15 to 30 centimeters in length, 3 to 4 mm in diameter, and the tail would be curled. Adult fame, female, 22 centimeters length, 2 to 6 mm. 2 to 6 mm diameter tail stride. Here we can observe both male and female worms. Here we can observe the, turl, the tail region. The tail is curved. The end of the organism tail region is curved. This is male. And the end of the female one is straight. Like this we can differentiate both male and female. And Next, the egg. After coagulation, the male, the female, uh, female produce a number of eggs, and the Oscaris egg is round or oval, 16 40 mm size, thick brown shell, and have rough surface. It is the infective form of parasite life cycle. The life cycle of Oscaris completes in single host human. Adult worm lives in small intestine. There are some stages in life cycle. Stage 1 eggs in feces. The, fe the eggs come out to the environment through the feces. Sexually mature female produces as many as 2 lakhs eggs per day. Please note that mature female produces approximately 2 lakhs eggs per day which are shed along with feces in unembryonated form. They are non-effective. In it is the eggs are unembryonated form which are non-effective. Next stage 2. In stage 2 it uh, the development in soil. Embryonation occurs in soil as optimum temperature of 20 to 25 centimeter, uh, sorry, 20 to 25 degrees Celsius with sufficient moisture and oxygen. Infective larva develops within egg in about 3 to 6 weeks. Next stage 3. In stage 2, we can observe these embryonated eggs develop in soil with the temperature of 20 to 25 degrees Celsius and sufficient moisture content should be there and also oxygen. Next stage 3, human infection and liberation of larva. Human get infection with ingestion of embryonated eggs through contaminated food and water. Within embryonated state inside egg, first stage larva develops into second rapidity, second larvae. This second stage larvae is known as rapidity larvae. Second stage larvae is stimulated to hatch out by the presence of alkaline pH in intestine and solubilization of its outer layer by bile. Next stage 4. Migration of larva through lungs. Hatched out larvae penetrates the intestinal wall and carried, carried to liver through portal circulation. It then travels via blood to heart and to lungs by pulmonary circulation within 4 to 7 days of infection. The larvae in lungs moves twice enlarge and breaks into alveoli. Next stage 5 re-entry to stomach and small intestine. From alveoli the larvae then pass up through bronchi and into trachea and then swallowed. 
the larvae passes down the esophagus to the stomach and reaches into small intestine once again small intestine is the norm normal habitat of ascaris and it colonizes here within intestine parasite molts twice and mature into adult worm sexual maturation occurs within 6 to 10 weeks and the mature female discharges its eggs in intestinal lumen and excreted along with feces continuing the life cycle the life cycle the life span of parasite is 12 to 18 months here is the life cycle of ascaris lumbricoides this one is the male because here we can observe the curved tail the tail is curved have curved in female we can observe the straight tail after copulation they produce 2 lakh eggs female produce 2 lakh eggs per day these eggs come out through feces these are embryonated egg next these embryonated eggs in the intestine releases the larval into the these egg in the body of the human these are embryonated egg and after the embryonation these release of larva into the intestine and these larva undergoes into in liver next it goes into heart next it goes into larva and in sorry lungs in lungs it undergoes it goes into alveoli in alveoli it undergoes into second molting after second molting it uh, comes into third stage of larva Pre next after third stage of larva it undergoes into third molting which gives rise to fourth stage of larva after fourth stage of larva it goes through bronchi trachea larynx glottis throat esophagus stomach and next last four it undergoes into fourth molting and after we can observe it develops into juvenile stage after juvenile stage it undergoes it uh, final finally enters into adult stage and uh, later on it cooperates and produces eggs which which shows the which completes the life cycle of ascaris lumbricoides next final pathogenicity of ascaris lumbricoides this the disease caused by ascaris lumbricoides is called as ascariasis this disease is asymptomatic which means this disease doesn't have any symptoms uh, doesn't have any symptoms if the number of forms are less a heavy infection causes nutritional deficiency and severe abdominal pain it also causes stunted growth in children thank you for listening in next class let uh, we'll discuss about unit 4 thank you